Let's get ready to go, because this is the Chet Show. And it's going to be fun. <laughs> Oh, hang on, I'm making a, I'm making a recording. Um, it's going to be a beautiful... I like how you say that. You know, with a little cynicism, like, it may or may not be for you. I'm going to have a blast. This is the beginning of a brand new Chad Matthew podcast. I know a lot of you have not heard me talk with so much passion before. It's the beginning of a beautiful thing. It's going to be an amazing friendship. It will. It will. You're going to love me. <laughs> Let's go. That's right. You do make everything fall into place. And uh, right now, who's going to make it fall into place for you on this download of the intro pilot session is Martin. Hey. Hey, Martin. Um, Martin is a audio genius. Well, Well, thank you. So, we, we only met like an hour ago, and now he's, uh, he's calling me an audio genius because I faded out a song. Hey, sometimes you just got to do something right, and, 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 and automatically you get praised. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, shouldn't it be that way? Soundies don't get praised enough. We are going to chat about pretty much a little bit of everything, anything. Um, as I said, this is going to be your little taste of my wondrous voice that loves to chitty chat and chitty 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 chat chat. It's a lovely sounding voice. Chitty chitty chat chat bang bang. <laughs> well, not so much now, but it was going very well it up is. till that point. No, guys, I am really excited <laughs> to be finally doing a bit of a podcast and putting a lot of the stuff that I've got to say, a lot of the mojo, motivation, inspiration. Um, I've you know, I've been plugging and posting and putting out a lot of my lifestyle for such a long time now. And um, it was really important to this process. It was it was really to to immortalize that that this beautiful city, this amazing country, and the ability of having twenty four hours that we all do, that you can actually do the things that you choose to do. And I think this is going to tie in really nicely to working on, you know, just enjoying conversation, hmm. mojo, energy. What? <laughs> Feng Shui. Feng Shui. I said to him, he was Ying. No, I was Ying. No, no. No, I was both. You were, and you no, were one. No, you were You were y- one massive Yang. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that was the uh, the conversation. <laughs> so I balance him out. You do, you do. Tell us a bit. Tell me and everyone about, I guess, podcasts and and where you see, uh, you know, kind of everything that I've spoken about over the last hour. Kind of how that how that kind of plays out over time. Because I mean, I've heard a few people's like beginning podcasts, and then you hear them later, and it just sounds like a radio station. It sounds amazing. It sounds so fluent, mm. and um, you know, I, I was like, okay, don't don't get too caught up in like how you're going to sound, Chad. You know, because it it's well, as long as you got something to say, I think that's that's what that was my impression of podcasting. It's like as long as yeah. I've got something to say, um, and get some good energy, some really good people who you know love to band and love to chat and also can add value. I thought, oh, okay, well, if I got all those things, that would be a pretty reasonably off the off the mark kind of start. Of course, I think positive podcasts are like always welcome. Yeah. I think they're great. I just don't want to. I and yes, this is for you out there. It's not going to sound like a motivational speaking prophecy of change your life. I've got the answers <laughs> because I can tell you what worked for me. Well, that's good. I don't think uh, people need any more of those those darn no, that's motivational right. speakers trying to sell their books. That's right. Do you know? Have you ever noticed that? People like okay, so I, I'm do, I'm fo- focused more on the coaching and focus more on uh, kind of getting involved in you know technical kind of work where you're actually working with people. You're not just sending them away to do everything on their own and not be a part of the process. Mm. You know, I think one hour with someone as a PT is great, but it's it doesn't develop um, your skills. 
because you're not invested. You're invested for one hour. And I, I kind of, I find that I find more stuff in literature and more stuff in um, visual imagery and, and uh, kind of like um, content when I'm thinking about things that are happening, not just in my life, but around me. And that's okay. kind of what I want this to be about. You know, I kind of want to draw from so many different places and experiences. And, you know, there's all these people who are selling things. They got the best, the best way to do this, the best way to do that. But then I, you go in and you look, well, where have you done it? And they, don't, they, all they do is sell it. They don't do it. They sell it. It's like. For, for a guy that I only met, you know, not that long ago, I feel like I know him already. Like that. It just clicks. Yeah, it, it does. It does. How's, how's the, how's all the lockdown stuff been for you? For me? Yeah. Well, it's been pretty good because I, um, I've been very lucky, I would say. I have a full-time job at UNSW still, <laughs> still, hopefully, hopefully next year as well. We'll see. Um, but I also, you know, run this studio. You're not lucky. Sorry, can I stop you there? Uh, this is going to be part of the, the, the show, guys. Um, this is where I will get all motivational talkerish. Um, you're not lucky. You're deserving because you're obviously you're good at your job and they're hiring you on skills. And I really don't like when um, and dislike when I don't value my own, my own uh, like effort and my own thoughts, my own things. And when I see that in other people, you know, the other day... <clears throat> Uh, this lady was working, walking with flowers and this has been a rewiring for me over the last couple of years, words I do and don't use. And I guess you guys will find those out because I will pull up when those words come out. And she was standing at the lights and I thought, oh, you know, you're, you got some flowers. Oh, you must be, you're very lucky. And I thought, and I turned around to her again. I said, actually, you're not lucky. You're obviously deserving. Like someone's giving you flowers because you're rocking their world. Mm. Like luck would be that, you know, she, she just, she's not deserving. She's, she's just because she likes the smell and look of something. It's just appeared in her arms. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see your point. Yeah. And I That's think, good. I think with conversations that we have with ourselves mm. are the conversations we have with others. So not telling yourself, well, actually I got this job because, well, I'm, I'm great. I'm, I'm amazing at what I do and I'm going to get even better each time I go back and mm. each time I am more practical and not a theorist and thinking about it, I, I'm going to get more done. More stuff will be out there and I, that will be my accolade. It'll be the consistency. I think that's a very interesting take. I like yeah. That. Sorry. I had to stop you there because that is what I'm going to talk about. That kind of sure. stuff. Uh, yeah. Going back to it. Um, so yeah, my, my job hasn't been affected so far. So, cause I know a lot of other people that have been, and then when I'm running the sound booth, the only thing that's really been affected has been just general hires, like musicians coming in, wanting to use the booth. In saying that there have, there has been a, a big upturn in the last few months of, of people wanting to come in and like people are starting to come out of their houses again. It's like in Sydney anyway. And, yeah. um, that's really nice because my whole thing is I want to help people get the best sound they can. And while I say that, a siren goes off in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. But yeah, no, like I, I want to make people have the best sound that they can. And that's why I love this job. This, this sound booth is awesome. And being a sound engineer and, and hearing the results, it's awesome. Is it a job or a career? It's something that could turn into a full-time job. Right now, I just feel like that would just be way too much stress, just having all the time doing creative industries, I just find is a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I like having a, a split of, um, of okay. having just like a, a normal, like a workflow, just going to somewhere, uh, an environment that like I like going to. And it makes this sound booth worth coming to as well, because it means I'm, I'm not here all the time, like in this space. Yeah. It's special to go to. And so I feel that specialness with people who come in here because honestly, for most people, they don't go to a sound booth. Like they, they rarely go to a sound studio. You go there to create something or to have like you, you're creating from your vision, right? Right. Yeah. And you need a space or you need someone like an engineer to assist you with that. And when you leave, 
my hope is that people go out of here thinking that, oh, that was amazing. That was such a great experience. Yeah. So that's what I want to create with this space is great experiences. But why aren't they not coming? You were saying that they weren't coming. They're they not they coming. Weren't, they weren't using, utilizing the use of studios. Oh, because of, of, of COVID. Oh, right. I thought you, I thought you meant as, as like an industry thing or oh, no, as, a, no. as a practical thing. So this There's, is just, just this, this period. Yeah, it's just this period of time. Oh, okay. Well, get out there, guys, and start using studios. It, it's okay. Yeah. You know, just practice so, so, um, practice all the things that the government have, have put out there and um, just yeah. be sensible. I mean, initiative, guys, initiatives. It's, it's not, it's not um, it doesn't have, doesn't have to be harder than what it is. So I'm really excited about this. I obviously have a l- many different topics to talk about, and I don't really have one set in stone for you guys now. Um, I kind of just wanted to get these guys mind to hear my voice a little, and and we well, heard mine a fair amount, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is good. I I, I definitely am going to base this show around um, hosting. You know, I've got a lot to add, and I got a lot of value. You have got a lot of stories. Yeah, I do, but I, I want it to be. I'm I'm a community kind of guy. Um, I definitely feel a void when I'm not uh, a part of projects and, and things because, you know, I was I was always a bit of the ugly duckling and I left out of school and um, even from a very young age, I never ha- built those relationships with my with my family um, at the so for me, what I've done since I've learned a lot about how to own all that and have those conversations really, really genuinely and really open and honest. And sometimes people are a bit taken because I just say all these things that normally people would bottle up. And I did for a long time as well and put it kind of really out there. And, you know, I, I've been reading this book lately and the book, um, uh, is about psychology and I was reading it, um, through all the, um, disorders and things that people can have. And I realized that um, there's a lot of things that I've gone through in my life that I've really kind of started to understand how those things happened. Um, now, I never had a bad upbringing. Um, my, my family were always providers and they all, they all, did, um, they all did their part. They, they, kind of, they kind of weren't the most reactive to emotional needs and I was reading a book, and and I mean this this is only just as theory so far. Um, because, <laughs> Your own theory? No, yeah, because I'm I I haven't spoken to my family for a while. I was like reading these books, and obviously I'm going back through my childhood and da da da, and I was thinking, oh, you know, post traumatic stress, and you know, because I listened to a podcast, um, uh, and Sia was on it. And she was amazing. Oh my God, I'd love to have her on my show. Like she just, she just could talk and talk and talk and she would laugh at herself and she had, she had a wild time. I had a wild time listening to her and actually it gave me a lot of energy to start this. And she went through this whole stage in her life where she just, you know, locked the door and just had to like take in as much information about everything to where she was and own all that and understand all that. And she, she was brilliant. Like she had gone into the depths of her own despair and not just through music, through literature and through information. And it was really wild. It was like really inspirational to me to listen to somebody else wanting to understand themselves. Because while you're going out and living a healthy life and, and going to the gym and, and everything, it's, it's great. It's really wonderful. But you can't change the foundation. You can make it stronger, but you can't rip the foundation out from under a building. You know, you have to work with what's there. And I think that's what real, that's what I learned a lot about myself. It's like, okay, so I can't change these things that, that, that make me sad or really evoke uh, certain emotions in me. But what I can do is understand them. So when they come up, they're not negative triggers anymore. They're more positive triggers. And and by positive meaning, I understand why I'm feeling that way. And I don't have to question everything and start guessing what, what something that seems similar could be about to unleash because it has in the past. Because we do a lot of what ifs. Life is like, you know, not just a box of chocolates and it's not just what you're going to get. It's actually what you're going to go and get. 
And that's what I want to base this show on. It's not what you're going to get. Because if you wait around for someone to tell you what you're going to get, you're never going to have it. And that's what you want. You want to go and be able to be a dreamer, a believer, and an achiever. And you're the only person who will be the person who can embody that. Because no one is going to be the saving grace of your own destiny. Like you are, you are the catalyst of what it is that you desire. And it will take you on the most amazing disappointing and rapid journey. But the only reason that happens most of the time is so you can fully experience what it is that you truly want. You don't want it to be over before it's begun. And that's why life throws all these turns. So you can keep experiencing exactly what it is that you want all the way to the end of that. So when you're ready to move the goalposts yet again and set some more, you know, mammoth journeys for yourself ahead, you can actually sit back and appreciate and go, fuck, I did that. I did that. What's one of yours? The biggest thing that I got to learn in life is um, the one thing that I felt was always taken away from me. And that was that people never made me, but people never allowed me, I should say, to believe that where I was was where I could start. I didn't learn to read and write till I was 18. I was out of home um, in my early teens, 14. You know, I came back and forth uh, um, and, you know, was just kind of into a whole lot of things, um, you know, running around in the 90s and and kind of um, living in, ex- in, in places that would allow me to be everywhere, and do everything that I wanted at the time. And I do not regret that. But what I'm so disgruntled with, with therapists, with society, with friends, (laughs) with family, with educators, there always is this place that you apparently need to go for approval to get started in what you want to do. And that was so detrimental to my mental health because as a person with a lot of energy, I didn't have time to wait around for this magical place to appear. Like I needed to utilize my energy now. You know, I wasn't just an ADHD kid who wanted to run amok. I wanted, I needed to get rid of this energy. And you weren't listening to me. So of course I reacted negatively because I can't control energy that I'm not burning or using. And all the way from adolescence to my teens, to my, you know, adult years, all the, um, the drug and alcohol, um, usage and, and things that really kept holding me back was all because I didn't realize because no one ever allowed me to think that where I was was where I could start. And that's why I'm here today with you. I, called I, think, that's you. A, I think that's a great lesson. Yeah. I think that's, that is an, that's an excellent message. Thank you. And I hope that a lot more of this conversation will come out because um, I've got a lot to share and I'm really open and really, really humble to, to hopefully get into your ears, people, and share with you my journey and, and where I'm going to where I'm going to get to. So thank you. Hopefully that didn't go too, too deep too soon. I think it did, but that's just where I'm at when I get talking. Um, so look guys, thank you so much. This is an intro, lots more to come. It's going to be a a wild ride and, um, hopefully it's going to impact you positively.